For most people, Christmas consists just in one night or even one day. Christmas 25th of December and that's it. You unwrap the gifts, you give and receive and that's pretty much everything that everyone is expecting. When we speak of the Catholic Church and our beautiful liturgy, situation is different. What we have here is not only one night or one day, what we have is Christmas season. And Christmas season has its beginning in that night, at that night of Christmas, but then it covers several days after that. What's the purpose of those days? What can we receive? What can we get from that? That's the question. Fortunately, and that's a blessing for us, there is some guidance. We have someone leading the way, and that one is John the Evangelist. We think that he is the author of the first letter of St. John that we have in the New Testament. And if you pay some attention to the readings after Christmas, you will notice immediately that the letter of St. John, this particular letter, the first letter of St. John, has a very prominent presence. Why is it so? It is because we can say that the first letter of John is a sort of meditation around the mystery of Christ's incarnation. It is all about the reality of God in our own flesh. The reason St. John had to write this letter can be grasped in the first reading of today. It is taken from the second chapter of this first letter of St. John. We find that there would be some people, they are not named, but we know that they exist, some people that would attempt to deceive us. Well, that's a dangerous word. Someone is trying to deceive you. Someone is trying to ruin your faith. Something is threatening to destroy what you have received from the apostles, what you have received when you first heard the gospel of salvation. The particular kind of teaching these people were bringing to that community is not our immediate concern. Our immediate concern is that our faith can be threatened. And our first concern is that we have to be well equipped to defend our faith and to remain faithful. Now, this beautiful text from the first reading is teaching us something we can do to remain faithful. If you want to remain faithful, faithful to the gospel, faithful to the Lord, first thing you have to do is to remain faithful to the message you received in the first place, to remain faithful to the preaching of the apostles. And that means that if you are too, too attentive and too, too curious about other teachings, you are risking your faith. Second point you can do is to trust the anointing, the presence of the Holy Spirit in your soul and in your community. The Holy Spirit is not just for each one of us. The Holy Spirit is the gift coming from God for the community. When we trust the presence of the Spirit acting upon our community and when we remain faithful to what was, what has been given to the community in the first preaching, we are in a far better condition to remain faithful to the Lord. That's also my wish for you. May the Lord bless you.